Hey, this is Avell with batteriesandaflash.com. What a lot of customers tell me is that they have this old device and they have battery that they can't replace because they've looked at every store and it's just nowhere to be found. So what do you do? When building a battery pack, you're gonna need to know a couple of things about it. Let me show you. A couple of things you're gonna need to know is how to make sure it's right side up. The other is there's symbols on the bottom that tell you things about the battery. The uh, trash can with the X through is gonna tell you do not dispose this battery in the trash. The chemicals are harmful to the soil. The other is this black circle with a white circle on the inside. Down below that symbol, it's gonna tell you that it's a NICAD battery, even if the battery isn't labeled NICAD. Now, the other thing we're really looking at is the voltage and the milliamp. So the voltage tells us that it's 4.8 volts, which means that there's four NICAD 1.2 volt batteries in series. The other thing is the amperage. Each of these batteries is at 800 milliamp. You can change that depending on what's available. And the other indication this is a NICAD battery is that lower milliamps means it's indicative of NICAD and higher milliamps are indicative of nickel metal. So now that we know what we're going to need, let's get started. Hey, you're still with me. Great. So now that we're ready to get started, what tools are you going to need? Well, I'm going to need some uh, cutters, a razor, a wire stripper. I prefer the automatic kind. Um, possibly a, a blow dryer or a heat gun. Obviously a soldering iron, solder, and I actually prefer the steel wool versus the sponge uh, for cleaning your tip. And most importantly, your original battery pack and your new batteries. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to need to cut off this plastic. Very lightly, stick your blade underneath the end making sure not to cut into the battery itself. Kind of pull up and cut it. Then the rest should just be able to peel off. So now you see that we're gonna have these wires, some tape, and these tabs. We're gonna need to pay attention very closely to these, to these um, tab orientations. So be careful not to tear this apart right away. It might even help if you um, take a picture with your phone as you're doing this. So I'm removing the tape that's kind of holding things into place. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to start to cut off these wires as close as I can using my wire cutters to the end. We, you never know how much wire you're going to need. It's better to be safe than sorry. Putting that off to the side. Now what I want to do Keeping this battery together, I'm going to take my new batteries, and these batteries are EBC-307-1. That's a AA NICAD 800 milliamp with tabs. The tabs make it easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through these batteries, and I'm going to orient them the same exact way as this battery. What we need to make sure is that we can run these tabs across, across the uh, same direction. So tab is oriented this way, so I'm going to put this battery this way. And then I need the negative end here with the tab, with the tab running this direction. So now we got that. I find it easier, actually, as I start to put these together is to use a little bit of scotch tape just to hold the batteries in place in my orientation. So when I'm putting it together, it will stay. It's not necessary, it's just something I do. So now I need the negative end up here. We'll just put that to the side there. Again, tabs running towards the, these other tabs. So that's going to be that direction. Yep. And the positive end this direction, making sure the tabs are oriented here. Same direction. Okay, another piece of scotch tape. Keeps our batteries in 
hands and my orientation. Okay, I'll stack these batteries together. All right, had a couple of challenges with the method I was trying. So I found a, another method I'm gonna try, just because the way the TAS were lining up, it wasn't working for the overlay the way I needed it to go. So I actually peeled the tab off. I'm gonna put a quick dab of solder here and here, and then apply my tab. You gotta do this fast, because you don't want to burn out the uh, battery itself, cause it to be an internal short. So making sure that your tip's clean and ready and hot. Make sure to tin it. Tinning is, uh, makes it very important. Prior. And we're gonna put a dab of solder there. There we go. And there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is take my tab and use a pair of pliers because it gets hot. And to finish up, we're going to need to take these tabs and fold them over the edge the way they were. With that, let me get some more solder. By the way, this solder is flux infused, meaning the flux is in the solder. That's why I'm not using uh, flux in the uh, while I'm soldering. Again, I'm going to prep it. I'm going to do it away from the battery. I'm putting a dab of solder on here for me to be able to add my wires onto. Okay, I'm going to leave those up so that you can uh, then put your wires onto them. Gonna even them up. And you only want to take off um, about a quarter of wire. Well, quarter insulator. Put it in there. I've got my two ends, about a quarter. Twist these up a little bit. We're gonna tin these ends. Use my battery pack as a holder. And my tip, nice and pretty. Do a little tinning. There you go. Same with the other. There you go. Now we're ready to attack these wires. Now the important thing is is to make sure that your positive and negative go to the right terminals. So remember the ridge on this battery. It means this is the positive side. Red means positive. So, that said, let's get this wire on there. I don't need any more solder because the solder on here is going to hold. All right, let's get the black on here. Black means negative. All right, again, the tinning and the preparation. I don't need any more solder. All right, with that on there, we're good to go. These are done, wait till it cools off. We'll just fold these all over, like they were. And our pack, albeit ugly, is gonna be functional now. So, now that we've got this pack built, all we need to do is make sure these terminals are no longer going to be a hazard by either, this isn't the pretty way, this is the do-it-yourself way. You can either use some kind of tape, like a packing tape or a um, duct tape. 
The other thing you can do is go onto eBay and get heat shrink. Um, I'm using an 83 millimeter, four mil heat shrink. Basically what you're gonna do is where these edges are, you're gonna just open them like that and you'll slide one edge to the edge of this battery and another edge to the edge of that battery. You can actually use a blow dryer to, to take care of these on a high setting. Um, maybe a, a low wind speed so that the heat is concentrated. You're gonna hold it real close. Otherwise, you can go to the store and pick up a really cheap heat gun, heat it up. Begin to heat it along the edges, along the top. There you have it, your very own battery pack. All right, so I'll admit, it wasn't my best work, but we've gone from a pack that you couldn't find, tearing it apart, to now a now usable battery pack. And just for all those people who are gonna have a field day out there, Scotch tape is a solution to keeping the batteries oriented, but typically you use super glue. And what you're gonna do is lay down the two batteries, you'll put a dab of super glue in the middle, it'll fill in the crack, and then it'll dry and then do the same with the other two batteries it'll dry and put the two stacks together another dab of glue on either side it will dry and then your pack will be a little more solid like this but for the people who only have scotch shape it works too so there you have it and remember to tune in charge up or you just might be left in the dark Ow!